Hey guys, what's going on? Canal here, Bulls on Wall Street. There is all this commotion right now happening on the big crypto market crash that is going on the last few days. And, you know, there's a lot of news going on that China is closing down all its mining facilities and that's putting a lot of sell pressure into the crypto market. And, you know, that's the reason for the crash. And then, you know, before that, it was, you know, Elon Musk, you know, saying, you know, Tesla is not going to take it and all this kind of stuff. But there's a couple things to just kind of be aware of. The market was rolling over way before Elon or anybody else got involved and tried to move the market around before this China stuff came around. The China news that, you know, they're banning cryptocurrency that's been around for years. Before all of that, the price action was saying, hey, roll over. Like if you're really thinking about, you know, what uh, the market was doing, you know, you had already this kind of slow rollover happening over here. And now we're kind of coming into completion on that. Uh, the good thing is that we are getting into some spots where there could be some potential buy spots. But I think the big thing that we've got right now that is a positive is that there is a line in the sand that is happening in the market that we can frankly trade around. And I think that's going to be really, really important. So if you look here, this kind of 30,000 to, you know, maybe 28,000 level is going to be really important. 30,000 is obviously just a psychological level. And then, you know, you had that previous wick from about a month ago that tested down in there. And you can see we've been getting defended with some really wicked like ten thousand you know dollar pops the last you know month or so every time we've come back down here we've had ten thousand dollar pop and now we're kind of coming back down again and so it does feel like okay you know when you're in it that the world is ending and you know what the heck are we going to do remember that these are just trading instruments it is no different than you know a futures contract the stock or so on and so forth you know, I know a lot of people are, you know, into this is the future and so on and so forth. And maybe it is and maybe it isn't. But, you know, as our job is traders and investors is to, of course, time things perfectly. You know, you could be in the best coin in the world, but if you don't got it at the right price, then what is it? So what we want to be doing is trading around these levels and making sure that we're protecting our capital so that when the market bottoms out, you have a full load of cash to come in. And, you know, we saw this like really previously, you know, for a lot of you guys like, you know, have been with me for a while. You know, we've had our cryptocurrency uh, chat room and Discord room for, you know, years. And it was very, very similar, you know, not similar, but, you know, when the market had topped out in, you know, 2018, uh, a, a lot of people held on so long that what happened is like when the market finally bottomed out, and it took some time. I don't think it'll take this long this time, but I, you know, a few months of consolidation um, is probably in the cards. But when the market finally like kind of bottoms out, you know, nobody has any cash left to play, right? Because they're just left holding the bags or adding to the bags. I think these are kind of very, very stupid terms to use. Like, what the heck is a bag, right? Like, hey, these are just coins. But that's like the nature of, you know, the kind of market, you know, where people are always just into all this hodl stuff. And that's not really the case. What we got to do is just trade around these levels. And so we've got a spot here at 30,000. You know, if we hold, we may get a little bit of a dead cat bounce. But the thing to remember is whether this China stuff happened or not, that the trend is overall down. So if you look at it, if you think about trends in terms of price or even using moving averages, as a way to help identify trends, you know, you can see, right, the slope of all your major moving averages are pointing down. The price and primary trends are down. Secondary trends are down. We may get a bounce off this 30,000. And if we do, I'll play, but it'll be short lived. I would expect two, three, four days max. If you just look at the previous price action, the range, maybe two, three days. So for a lot of you guys, that's just a stay away because who can really be that nimble except. Right. Some dude that's just sitting in front of his computer all day like me, you know, that's different. right? <laughs> like for a lot of you guys, that's not going to be you're going to have be at work or so on and so forth. If you're looking at a longer term trade, then this is a no trade. You know, this is a no trade. But if we do hold here, I think that there's some things that we could bounce. Uh, Bitcoin is the least fun to trade, at least in my book. 
But I think that, you know, uh, if we really look here at, uh, you know, kind of some of the major coins, I think that probably Ethereum is, you know, right at, you know, potential sweet spot uh, where you could bounce. Uh, you know, do you want to be just balls deep on this thing? I don't think so. But I do think that we're just like right in an area. You can see here you get your 200-day moving average. You broke under the lower Bollinger Band, and, you know, you're obviously very, very oversold. You've got a couple levels down here to watch, maybe 1,700, maybe this 200 SMA. If they hold, and uh, don't mind my squeaking chair. I'm at my parents' house visiting my parents, and uh, <laughs> this chair hasn't been used for quite some time. So it's a sneaky McGee over here. I think this could be a potential bounce, um, possibly BNB. I would stay away from all shit coins right now, like anything under 20. You want to stick like when you're trading this stuff and you can see the market's just crashing right now. When you're into this, you want to be trading the big boys with the liquidity because they're all going to move around similar. So I would think like either BNB, ETH, maybe even Sol if you really want to feel like very speculative. But how you want to time this is once you have your levels down, then what we want to be doing is looking on smaller term time frames. I use a 15 minute chart and look for some type of reversal pattern, either a W, which would be like a double bottom with a lower high or some type of rounding pattern. <clears throat> those are going to give you, you know, those are going to give you the real juice. But right now you can see on a short term time frame, you're not seeing like any, any sign yet that we are reversing. We're not seeing any sign yet that the price action is changing. But what we have to remember is that in general, in cryptocurrency, when things look the nastiest, I'm talking about the nasty, nasty, nastiest, that's usually the time where the market will fake you out and trigger some longs. And so like right now we're breaking under this 30,000. Say we get under this 30,000. If we rip under to like say 28 and then rip back, that's like probably what would cause the max max pain, right? Like everybody's using that 30,000 as that line in the sand. You rip under and then you, you know, you rip back over and shake everybody out. I think something like that could be, you know, potentially in the cards. But once again, I won't step in front of this train unless I see the signs. And what I will do though, like say I take a shot, right? Say I take a shot. So like I took a shot on this BNB for, you know, a hot second and then Binance shut down and <laughs> fucking get rid of it. But um, yeah, why does Binance do that, right? But what if I take a shot on something, what I look for is like a reversal signal, a tight stop, and then I'll risk 1% of portfolio, meaning that I put 1% of my account in because that'd be stupid, right? You wouldn't have anything in it. But meaning that if I get stopped out of the position, I would lose 1% of my account. So you could have a 10% stop loss. If it hits, you lose 1% of your account. So what you can do is when you see that bottoming kind of action, say you take four positions or three positions, you want to size them accordingly so that if you get stopped out, you lose 1% of your account. If you got a smaller account, like say you're trading five, 10,000, I would do two to 3% of your account. No more than that. And you take your shots because the big thing is like in cryptocurrency and any type of trading, you really want to be involved. Like when you get this kind of trending environment, that's really when you want to put the risk on. When you're in a downtrending environment and you take long trades, which would be counter trend trades, you want to be lowering your risk because these are the hardest trades to do. You know, the easiest trades, the lowest risk, highest probability trades are when you have a coin that's based out and it comes out of range and your nine EMA is pointing up and you can play with the ebbs and flows of that. But um, now that is over, right? And it's going to take months to heal this. It could take three, four, five, six months to really heal and digest this drop. Bottoms are never... An event, they're usually a process, meaning it takes time to heal these things. So don't step in front of the train, guys. Um, there'll be a trade in it somewhere, but it'll be a quick counter trend trade. The real money is made in run up markets, right? And we're not in that. Right now, anything we take would just be a little scalpy McGee. And the biggest thing is to keep your powder dry. <clears throat> when this market does bottom out, you get that basing action, you get the trend. That's when you want to come in hot on this. Till then, leave it alone. 
There's always going to be better times. I'll be in our Discord room trading, and you know, I'll make sure when it's time, I'll let you guys know, and uh, we'll take small shots. Otherwise, if you can't do that, just sit out. You know, just sit it out. Be in cash. Cash is nice. You know, cash is nice. You'll find yourself, especially if you missed a big chunk of this run. How many coins have there been like, man, like, you know, I used to trade like this fucking dot, right? And it was like a few dollars and it goes to like 50 bucks. And of course, you never hold the whole way. You sell early. We miss so many of these, right? Like, you know, this Matic, we used to trade this thing at four or five pennies, right? And it gets at three dollars. We missed all this run. So this like big pullback is actually awesome. We may get a chance to relive, the, redo this and do it right. How many coins that we had where we sold and then it went up like 10x, you know, again, right? So we're going to get a chance to relive all that. So that's the positive. Let's keep our powder dry and we're going to have some fun uh, when this market bottoms out. Until then, be on watch for a, a short-term reversal. That short-term reversal will just last a couple days though. Take care.